welcome to the new episode of the microbiology tube so in this today we will be talking about the ELISA test so the ELISA is the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay so from the topic you can see that the enzyme is linked with the antibody and the antibody is immobilized in something so from the name you can see the enzyme is linked with the antibody and that antibody you know is attached or is is immobilized in something and the term sa means it is the quantitative determination so from the overall topic you can know that the test is performed by the help of the enzymes which is linked in the antibody and that antibody is immobilized in something and from that you can detect the uh, uh, concentrations of the antigen or the antibody so here the enzyme link immunosorbent assay is the techniques used for the detections of either antigen or the antibodies in serum and other body fluids of the patients so from the elisa so you can detect uh, the concentrations of the antigen and antibody that is present in the serum and other body fluids of the patient so this essay involves the use of the antigen so you can use the antigen as well as you can use the antibody so for the determination of the concentration of the antigen or the antibody you can use the antigen or the antibody and that antigen and antibody should be immobilized in the microtiter plate so there are various types of the elisa so all this elisa have one specific goal that is the detections and the quantifications of the antigen or the antibody so first the principle of the elisa so the principle of elisa is an enzyme conjugated with an antibody so this is the enzyme that is conjugated with an antibody reacts with a colorless substrate to generate the colored reactions such substrate is called the chromogenic substrate so you can see the enzyme is conjugated with the antibody and and what happens is that this enzyme this enzymes will react with this colorless substrate the enzyme will react with colorless substrate and this colorless substrates will be changed into the colored reaction or colored reaction product so according to the concentration of the color product so the concentrations of the given antigen or the antibody can be determined i repeat the enzyme which are conjugated with the antibody will react with the colorless substrate so after the substrate is reacted the substrate will be changed into the product here the substrate are colorless initially after the enzyme is applied to the substrate a color reaction product will be formed a number of the enzymes has been employed for the elisa so there are various types of the enzymes that is needed or that that is employed for the elisa one is the alkaline phosphatase so the commonly used is the horse radish peroxidase and the beta galactosidase so the overall the uses of these types of the enzyme is to change the colorless substrate into the colored reaction product so now how the intensity of the color is determined as i have already told you the concentration of any antigen or the antibody will depend on the intensity of the color produced so that intensity of the color will be detected by the or uh, by the uh, spectrophotometer or the elisa reader so what are the types of the elisa 
so one is the indirect ELISA the second is the competitive ELISA and the third one is the sandwich ELISA and the competitive ELISA so there are three types of the ELISA one is indirect second is the sandwich and the third is the competitive ELISA so in the indirect ELISA what we do so in the indirect ELISA if you see here these are the antigens so these antigens are added on the mycotriter plate so after we add the antigen in the mycotriter plate then we add the blocking buffers so blocking buffers will block the protein binding site in the mycotriter plate so in the mycotriter plate there will be the various binding site for the proteins and that protein binding site should be blocked by the use of the blocking buffer so after we add the antigen we add the blocking buffer then we wash this mycotriter plate so after we wash this mycotriter plate with the buffer solutions what we do is that we put the primary antibody so this is called the primary antibody this is the antibody so this is called the primary antibody and what happens is that if the antigen and antibody has the affinity so it will bind for example if this antigen is of the HIV GP120 and this antibody is also of the HIV GP120 then both will have the affinity so both will bind but if the antigen is of the HIV and the antibody is of the hepatitis or some other kinds of the antibody this antigen and antibody won't have the affinity and will won't bind then after what will happen so these types of the uh, antibody will be floating in the buffer solutions but this type of the antibody won't attached here so then after what we do we again wash this so mycotriter plate with the buffer solutions then we add the secondary antibody which is also called the anti immunoglobulin so this is also called the anti immunoglobulin so what we do we add the secondary antibody after we add the secondary antibody we have to wash it again but one point you have to remember is that there is the E written here. What does this symbolize? This symbolizes the enzyme that is that is conjugated or that is attached with the second secondary antibody. So after you add the secondary antibody, so you have to wash the samples and you have to put the substrate. So what you do? You put the substrate here. You put the substrate. So after you put the substrate what will happen the substrate will be changed into the product here the substrate are the colorless product this substrate will be changed into the product by the help of the enzyme so by the help of the enzyme this enzyme the colorless substrate will be changed into the colored product again i repeat by the help of this enzyme the colored the colorless substrate will change into the color product and by the help of the ELISA reader we can determine the intensity of the color and similarly we can know the quantity of the given antigen that is present on the body fluids so this is about the indirect ELISA so next is the sandwich ELISA so in the sandwich ELISA first what we do is that we add the primary antigen so you can see this is the primary anti sorry antibody so first we add the primary antibody which is also called the capture antibody then after we use the antigen we add the antigen or the sample if the sample contains the antigen this antigen and antibody will have affinity then after we use this secondary antibody 
or this uh, this is the antibody that is actually this is not the secondary antibody this is the antibody that is linked with the enzyme so this was your enzymes so this is your antibody and this is your enzymes so then after what we do we wash again so in each, each steps you have to wash it so from here to here from here to here and from to here to here you wash it so after you wash the sample what you do you put the anti you put the substrate and by these kinds of these you know enzymes the substrate these kinds of the substrate will be changed into the product so this is your substrate enzymes and this is a colorless substrate and this colorless substrate will be changed into the color product and this color product uh, and we can determine the intensity of this color product by the colorimetry so you can see how actually the sandwich Eliza is after you put the after you put the second antibody so this is called the capture antibody this is the antigen this is your second antibody that is labeled or that is conjugated with the enzyme so this is your enzymes and what happens this enzymes will change the colorless substrate into the color product and we can determine the intensity of this color we can determine the intensity of this color product so now next is the competitive ELISA so in the competitive ELISA there will be the competition between the two antibody so one antibody is this antibody and next is this antibody so there will be the competition between this antibody so uh, what actually happens here so first what you do is that you put the you put the antigen antigen this antigens are immobilized in the mycotiter plate so after you put the antigen then after what you put you put the test serum or the antibody so if there is the affinity between the antigen and the antibody so if these two have the affinity so what happens is that the all the antigen antibody binding site all the antibody binding site will be used off by this antibody and there won't be any of this space for this antibody this is the antibody that is conjugated with the enzymes so there won't be any place for the antibody that is conjugated with enzymes and after we add the substrate so after we add the substrate what happens what actually happens is that we add the substrate but there is not the enzymes because this will be washed off if you see the procedure from very beginning first there is the antigen then after you add the test serum this test serum contains the antibody and all the antigens and antibody binding sites are utilized by this antibody now when you when you add the enzyme conjugated with the antibody so when you add the enzyme conjugated with the antibody there won't be any free space for this antibody to bind here so what happens this will be this won't be attached here so whenever we wash the mycotiter place this will be washed off so there will be only this anti antibody and if we add the substrate if we add the substrate so it won't change it into the product so it won't change into the product because there is not the enzymes if you see what happens when the in case of the negative so i was dis dis uh, describing about the positive test so no color scene means the patient is suffering from the disease in this competitive elisa so whenever there is no color scene the patient are suffering from this disease so in the negative test so what happens if the case is negative it means what happens whenever we test for a person suffering from hiv and that persons do not have the HIV 
So for example, I took the sample, I, I code the ant HIV antigen here. Then after I put the test sample, after I put the test sample, so this is the not the antibody of the HIV. So if this is not the antibody of the HIV, so this and this won't bind. So what happens is that when we wash this mycotiter place, this antibody will be washed off. And now there will be again only the remains of this antibody, antigen, sorry. There will be only the antigen. Then after what we do, we add this, this anti-enzyme conjugated with antibody. So after we add this enzyme conjugated with the antibody, now this enzyme conjugated with antibodies will attach here. Now if we add the soft state, look at here, if we add the soft state, the soft state will be changed into the product. This soft state was the colorless and this product is the colorful product and the color will be seen. So in this way, we can detect the, the disease or any antigen or the antibody from the ELISA test. And one point to be noted is that in the indirect ELISA and the sandwich ELISA for the positive test there was the there was color you know formation but in the competitive ELISA if the if there is the positive test then color won't be seen I mean to say if you are testing for the HIV and the patient is suffering from the HIV 2 and you are going to test through the competitive ELISA no color will be seen so no color will be seen means the test is positive and for the negative test the color formation will be there in the competitive ELISA so I think you have uh, you have received a lot of the knowledge from this slide if you are confused in some of the uh, things which I'm which I have not explained or which I have forget to explain so you can comment in the comment box so thank you for watching my video so please support me uh, please support the microbiology and the biological sciences so for that please subscribe my channel like the video and share